Hey everyone, Handry and Crazy Handry here, back once again with another Analog Pocket video. This time we're covering 9 tips about the device you may not know, or maybe you do! In any case, these are 9 useful tips, as well as reminders, for things that are pretty handy about the device. Ha <laughs> handy! Anyways, let's get to it! Number one is the different display options every platform has on the Analog Pocket. So regardless of what game you play, whether it's a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, or anything else on the Analog Pocket, they all have their own different display options, and all you have to do to access them is hold the home button, this one right here, then press left or right while holding it to toggle between the different modes. In the original Game Boy's case, you have the original green Game Boy screen, along with the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Light that was exclusive to Japan, as well as this Virtual Boy looking one that's based off a pinball matrix uh, LCD screen or LED screen. So these are some neat little options, especially if you want to pretend you're playing Virtual Boy on the analog pocket, which is really fitting for a game like Wario Land, which had its own Virtual Boy version that never came out aside from that. So that's pretty cool and a fun way to mimic the original hardware uh, in a more accurate way than the default analog setting does. Those are my preferred option, but you know, if you want the old school options, there you go. Number two is how to use save states, because right now by default there's no save state option on the analog pocket. Now in a future update we'll be getting the memories feature that'll add a far more deeper system than what we're about to show you, but in the meantime there is a handy beta option you can use that will let you use save states in a primitive state. So all you need to do is go to settings, go down to analog OS, go to beta, then turn on the quick save slash load option. The button will turn wide when you've turned it on. Then it'll tell you how to work, so you press up to save while holding the home button, or down to load, and that is pretty much it. So let's go and show it off right now. So we're gonna hold home and then press up to save. And let's go ahead and move forward a little bit. And let's say we, I don't know, run into an enemy or something, or we'll kill that enemy. We're off a cliff. If you hold home and press down, there we go, it loaded it to the previous save state, which is super useful for Game Boy games because they can be pretty tough. So there you go, we definitely recommend turning on the save state feature, at least until they add the memories option in the future. Just keep in mind, they can only have a single save point at a time for every game. That's right, if you swap games or turn off the power, your save state's going away. So keep that in mind, again, until the memories feature comes in the future update. Okay, now as you may have noticed, you haven't been actually hearing the analog pocket in this video itself. And that's because I have it muted. And as it turns out, there's a super quick way to make it mute or unmute it with a press of a button. Or really, two buttons. All you have to do is press the volume up and volume down buttons at the exact same time, like this. And you can turn the sound back on or press them again to make it go mute. Super handy, keep it in mind. Now the second thing I wanted to show off is pretty obvious, but I wanted to showcase it just because it's something you couldn't do on the original Game Boy hardware, which is use sleep mode. All you do is tap the power button once while the game is running, and then it goes to sleep. Tap it again to wake it up, and we are back in the action right where we left off. So think of it as a suspend state, although it's unmuted as we just now discovered. Uh, so it's basically a suspend point, which is super useful and works well with the save state feature we showed off earlier. Number four, how to turn on Super Game Boy controls, or by that I mean really Super Nintendo controls. Because if you, like me, used a Super Game Boy back in the day to play these games, or played really Super Nintendo versions of these games like Donkey Kong Country, then you might be used to how the Super Nintendo controller works, where Y is run, or roll in this case, and B is jump. To change this, go to Home, go to Settings, choose the system you're on, being the Game Boy, then go to Controls and turn on Super Game Boy, which again, the dial turned white when it's turned on. Once you've done that, Y is now roll and run in this case, and B is jump. So I definitely recommend turning that feature on if you're used to the Super Nintendo controller or really any modern systems controller. Number five, how to play Game Boy Color games as if they were on original black and white Game Boy. Now, as you probably know, there were many cartridges back in the day that worked on both the Game Boy Color and the original Game Boy, uh, being these black ones, these black cartridges that would display in color on the Game Boy Color or black and white on the original Game Boy. Now, by default, the Analog Pocket recognizes them as Game Boy Color games and displays them in color. But if for whatever reason you want to play them in Game Boy mode, all you have to do is click the home button, go to settings, go to systems, go to Game Boy, go to hardware, and then choose Force Game Boy Mode. Again, the dial will turn white if it's turned on. Now we're gonna quit the game and restart it and see what happens. There we go, it is now being recognized as a Game Boy game, which kind of lets you experience these games in a somewhat new way, not necessarily a better way, but a new interesting way if you only played them on the Game Boy Color before. 
Furthermore, there's a similar setting for Game Boy Color games that lets you force start them as if they're playing on a Game Boy Advance. Again, it's under the hardware section in settings for the Game Boy Color. Uh, turn the dot wide if you want to force them to run in GBA mode. Now, there's not a ton of reasons to do it in this case, although some games do have different effects. I don't have it with me right now, but in games like uh, Oracle of Seasons or Oracle of Ages, there are different shops available in Game Boy Advance mode that you won't find in the Game Boy Color. So something to keep in mind if you were playing those games or some of the others that have different Game Boy Advance features. Speaking of the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, we have tip number six, which involves the official analog link cable that lets you connect the analog pocket to any other generation of Game Boy except for the original Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance Micro. So in this case, the cable lets you connect to, like I said, any other system, but there's a key thing to keep in mind, and that's the fact that there is a toggle on the Switch which you'll want to switch between either Game Boy or Game Boy Color mode to Game Boy Advance. So there's just a toggle here between the original generations of Game Boy or their Game Boy Advance. I made that sound more complicated than it is. There's just a single switch between Game Boy Advance or any other Game Boy, basically. Make sure it's set to the right one. That way it'll work with that generation of Game Boy. Otherwise, it won't. Cable's not working, you probably just have it set to the wrong switch, so swap it to the other. Secondly, if you're using the analog pocket in ga for Game Boy Advance games and you're player one, you want to share your game with other systems, or really, if you if you are the host, in other words, make sure that the make sure that this end of the cable, the one closest to the toggle, is the one connected to your pocket, while the other one goes to the other system. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, just some quick tips to make sure the official link cable works okay for you. Speaking of link cables, we have tip number seven, which involves the GameCube to Game Boy Advance link cable, letting you use an analog pocket like a Game Boy Advance to connect it to your GameCube to work with some games like Pac-Man vs, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, or Zelda Four Swords Adventures. There is just one small problem, and that's the fact that by default, there are a couple of latches on the cable that make it incompatible with the analog pocket because there's nowhere for them to go. However, we have a whole video on how you can actually easily remove those two little latches, making it so it will work in the analog pocket, as well as maintain compatibility with your existing Game Boys. Go check it out, you'll find a link in the description below as well as on the screen at the end of this video. Tip number eight, how to use a Switch Pro Controller when using the analog pocket in docked form. So let's go and dock it real quick. Now if your pocket slash dock doesn't automatically enter pairing mode as indicated by a flashing light here, just go and press this button on the back right here. That'll make it so it starts looking for a controller, so it's now in pairing mode for Bluetooth. And then on the Switch controller, just go ahead and press the sync button on top. I like using a headphone port to uh, easily depress it. Hold it down until the lights start blinking on the bottom of the controller. There we go. And it should automatically pair right to the dock. There we go, it is now paired. I'm not gonna show it, but you can tell that it paired because the light stopped flashing. Meaning you can now use a Pro Controller on your analog pocket while in docked form. Um, now, obviously you don't have to use a Pro Controller either. It's my preferred way of playing, but plenty of other wireless controllers will work just fine, including 8-bit Doe ones, as well as any USB controller that you connect using the ports on the back. So, there you go. Finally, there's step nine, and that's how to update your analog pocket to the latest firmware with the newest features because unfortunately the analog pocket does not have Wi-Fi built in, meaning it's not gonna update yourself and you're gonna have to manually find the updates for it. So here's how that's going to work. First, you need a micro SD card. If you don't already have one lying around, you may have one in your Nintendo Switch that you can borrow temporarily. Don't worry, it won't do any damage to anything on the Switch itself because you don't need to actually remove anything. So just go and grab it out of your Switch if you have one and you'll be ready to go. Once you have your micro SD card, connect it to your computer using a reader or a built-in slot. Then head on over to Analog's official website, being analog.co, head to the support page and click on the pocket. Here you should be able to easily find the latest firmware for your pocket. Go ahead and download the latest firmware, then transfer it over to the main directory of the SD card if you didn't save directly to it. To be clear, I mean inside the top level directory, so not inside a folder or anything. Basically, if you open your SD card, the files should be found within that first screen. Secondly, make sure there are no other files or older firmwares for the analog pocket on the SD card. If there are, go ahead and delete them so the only one left is the newest one. Once you have the firmware downloaded to the micro SD card, make sure your analog pocket is turned off for this next step. Now, with it off, Go ahead and take the micro SD card and insert it into the side of the analog pocket just like this. Make sure the label is facing out, facing toward the screen, with the chip side on the back side. Now you may have to use your fingernail to really push it in there, this can be a little tough. It will lock into place eventually, but it can take a few times to get it to fully lock in there. Once it locks into place, it's time to turn on the analog pocket. Once you turn your analog pocket on, it'll automatically start doing the update. It'll probably take about 3-4 to four minutes. And as soon as it's done, it'll automatically restart itself and it'll be ready to go. 
And there you go, the Analog Pocket is ready to go with the latest new features and bug fixes. So make sure to keep an eye out on Analog's official website for the latest firmware updates, because as we already know, they're planning on adding new features for the Game Boy Camera and Super Game Boy in version 1.1, which should be hitting in not too long. And there you have it everyone, our 9 tips for the Analog Pocket. We hope you find them useful, and if you found any tips of your own, let us know by posting in the comments below. With that, thanks for watching, and of course stay subscribed to Game Explain for more on the Analog Pocket, and everything else Nintendo as well. We'll catch you later! Bye everyone!